the foundation of Christian religion gathered into six principles, and it is to be learnt of ignorant people that they may be fit to hear sermons with profit and to receive the Lord's Supper with comfort. Psalm 119.30 The entrance into thy words showeth light and giveth understanding to the simple. To all ignorant people that desire to be instructed. Poor people, your manner is to soothe up yourselves as though ye were in a most happy state, but if the matter come to a just trial it will fall out far otherwise, for ye lead your lives in great ignorance as may appear by these your common opinions which follow. 1. That faith is a man's good meaning and his good serving of God. 2. That God is served by the rehearsing of the Ten Commandments, the Lord's Prayer, and the Creed. 3. That ye have believed in Christ ever since you could remember. 4. That it is pity that he should live which doth any wit doubt of his salvation. 5. That none can tell whether he shall be saved, or not certainly, but that all men must be of a good belief. 6. That howsoever a man live, yet if he call upon God on his deathbed and say, Lord, have mercy on me, and so go away like a lamb, he is certainly saved. 7. That if any be strangely visited, he is either taken with a planet or bewitched. 8. That a man may lawfully swear when he speaks nothing but the truth, and swears by nothing but that which is good, as by his faith or troth. 9. That a preacher is a good man no longer than he is in the pulpit. They think all like themselves. 10. That a man may repent when he will, because the scripture saith, At what time soever a sinner doth repent of his sin, etc. 11. That it is an easier thing to please God than to please our neighbour. 12. That ye can keep the commandments as well as God will give you leave. 13. That it is the safest to do in religion as most do. 14. That merry ballads and books, as Scoggin, Beavis of Southampton, etc., are good to drive away time and to remove heart qualms. 15. That ye can serve God with all your hearts, and that he would be sorry else. 16. That a man need not hear so many sermons, except he could follow them better. 17. That a man which cometh at no sermons may as well believe as he which hears all the sermons in the world. 18. That ye know all the preacher can tell you, for he can say nothing but that every man is a sinner, that we must love our neighbours as ourselves, that every man must be saved by Christ, and all this ye can tell as well as he. 19. That it was a good world when the old religion was, because all things were cheap. 20. That drinking and bezzling in the alehouse or tavern is good fellowship and shows a good kind nature. 21. That a man may swear by the mass because it is nothing now, and by a lady because she is gone out of the country. 22. That every man must be for himself and God for us all. 23. That a man may make of his own whatsoever he can. 24. That if a man remember to say his prayers in the morning, though he never understand them, he hath blessed himself for all the day following. 25. That a man prayeth when he saith the Ten Commandments. 26. That a man eats his Maker in the sacrament. 27. That if a man be no adulterer, no thief, nor murderer, and do no man harm, he is a right honest man. 28. That a man need not have any knowledge of religion, because he is not book-learned. 29. That one may have a good meaning when he saith and doth that which is evil. These and such like sayings, what argue they but your gross ignorance? Now where ignorance reigneth, there reigns sin, and where sin reigns, there the devil rules, and where he rules men are in a damnable case. Ye will reply unto me thus, that ye are not so bad as I would make you. If need be, you can say the creed, the Lord's prayer, and the Ten Commandments, and therefore ye will be of God's belief, say all men what they will, and you defy the devil from your hearts. 
i answer again that it is not sufficient to say all these without book unless he can understand the meaning of the words and be able to make a right use of the commandments of the creed of the lord's prayer by applying them inwardly to your hearts and consciences and outwardly to your lives and conversations this is the very point in which ye fail and for an help in this your ignorance to bring you to true knowledge unfeigned faith and sound repentance here i have set down the principal points of christian religion in six plain and easy rules even such as the simplest may easily learn and hereunto is adjoined an exposition of them word by word if ye do want other good directions then use this my labour for your instruction in reading of it first learn the six principles and when ye have them without book and the meaning of them withal then learn the exposition also which being well conceived and in some measure felt in the heart ye shall be able to profit by sermons whereas now ye cannot and the ordinary parts of the catechism namely the ten commandments the creed the lord's prayer and the institution of the two sacraments shall more easily be understood thine in christ jesus william perkins the foundation of christian religion gathered into six principles question what dost thou believe concerning god one there is one god creator and governor of all things distinguished into the father the son and the holy ghost question what dost thou believe concerning man and concerning thine own self two all men are wholly corrupted with sin through adam's fall and so are become slaves of satan and guilty of eternal damnation question what means is there for thee to escape this damnable state three jesus christ the eternal son of god being made man by his death upon the cross and by his righteousness hath perfectly alone by himself accomplished all things that are needful for the salvation of mankind question but how mayest thou be made partaker of christ and his benefits four a man of a contrite and humble spirit by faith alone apprehending and applying christ with all his merits unto himself is justified before god and sanctified question what are the ordinary means for the obtaining of faith five faith cometh only by the preaching of the word and increaseth daily by it and also by the administration of the sacraments and prayer question what is the estate of all men after death six all men shall rise again with their own bodies to the last judgment which being ended the godly shall possess the kingdom of heaven but unbelievers and reprobates shall be in hell tormented with the devil and his angels for ever exposition of the principles one question what is god answer god is a spirit or a spiritual substance most wise most holy eternal infinite question how do you persuade yourself that there is such a god answer beside the testimony of the scriptures plain reason will show it question what is one reason answer when i consider the wonderful frame of the world methinks the silly creatures that be in it could never make it neither could it make itself and therefore besides all these the maker of it must needs be god even as when a man comes into a strange country and sees fair and sumptuous buildings and yet finds no living creatures there besides birds and beasts he will not imagine that either birds or beasts reared by those buildings but he presently conceives that some men either were or have been there question what other reason have you answer a man that commits any sin as murder fornication adultery blasphemy etc albeit he doth so conceal the matter that no man living know of it yet oftentimes he hath a griping in his conscience and feels the very flashings of hell-fire which is a strong reason to show that there is a god before whose judgment seat he must answer for his fact question how many gods are there answer no more but one question how do you conceive this one god in your mind answer not by framing any image of him in my mind as ignorant folks do that think him to be an old man sitting in heaven but i conceive him by his properties and works question what be his chief properties answer first he is most wise understanding all things aright and knowing the reason of them secondly he is most holy which appeareth in that he is most just and merciful unto his creatures 
thirdly he is eternal without either beginning or end of days lastly he is infinite both because he is present in all places and because he is of power sufficient to do whatsoever he will question what be the works of god answer the creation of the world and of everything therein and the preservation of them being created by his special providence question how know you that god governeth every particular thing in the world by his special providence answer to omit the scriptures i see it by experience meat drink and clothing being void of life could not preserve the life of man unless there were a special providence of god to give virtue unto them question how is this one god distinguished answer into the father which begetteth the son into the son who is begotten of the father into the holy ghost who proceedeth from the father and the son two question let us now come to ourselves and first tell me what is the natural estate of man answer every man is by nature dead in sin as a loathsome carrion or as a dead corpse lieth rotting and stinking in the grave question what is sin answer any breach of the law of god if it be no more but the least want of that which the law requireth question how many sorts of sin are there answer sin is either the corruption of nature or any evil actions that proceed of it as fruits thereof question in whom is this corruption of nature answer in all men none excepted question in what part of man is it answer in every part both of body and soul like as a leprosy that runneth from the crown of the head to the sole of the foot question show me how every part of man is corrupted with sin answer first in the mind there is nothing but ignorance and blindness concerning heavenly matters secondly the conscience is defiled being always either benumbed with sin or else turmoiled with inward accusations and terrors thirdly the will of man only willeth and lusteth after evil fourthly the affections of the heart as love joy hope desire etc are moved and stirred to that which is evil to embrace it and they are never stirred unto that which is good unless it be to eschew it lastly the members of the body are the instruments and tools of the mind for the execution of sin question what be those evil actions that are the fruits of this corruption answer evil thoughts in the mind which come either by a man's own conceiving or by the suggestion of the devil evil motions and lusts stirring in the heart and from these arise evil words and deeds when any occasion is given question how cometh it to pass that all men are thus defiled with sin answer by adam's infidelity and disobedience in eating the forbidden fruit even as we see great personages by treason do not only hurt themselves but also stain their blood and disgrace their posterity question what hurt comes to man by his sin answer he is continually subject to the curse of god in his lifetime and in the end of his life and after this life question what is the curse of god in this life answer in the body diseases aches pains in the soul blindness hardness of heart horror of conscience in goods hindrances and losses in name ignominy and reproach lastly in the whole man bondage under satan the prince of darkness question what manner of bondage is this answer this bondage is when a man is the slave of the devil and hath him to reign in his heart as his god question how may a man know whether satan be his god or not answer he may know it by this if he give obedience to him in his heart and express it in his conversation question and how shall a man perceive this obedience answer if he take delight in the evil motions that satan puts into his heart and do fulfil the lusts of the devil question what is the curse due to man in the end of his life answer death which is the separation of body and soul question what is the curse after this life answer eternal damnation in hell-fire whereof every man is guilty and is in as great danger of it as the traitor apprehended is in danger of hanging drawing and quartering three question if damnation be the reward of sin then is a man of all creatures most miserable a dog or a toad when they die all their misery is ended but when a man dieth 
there is the beginning of his woe? Answer, it were so indeed, if there were no means of deliverance, but God has showed his mercy in giving a saviour to mankind. Question, how is this saviour called? Answer, Jesus Christ. Question, what is Jesus Christ? Answer, the eternal Son of God, made man in all things, even in his infirmities like other men, save only in sin. Question, how was he made man void of sin? Answer, he was conceived in the womb of a virgin and sanctified by the Holy Ghost at his conception. Question, why must our Saviour be both God and man? Answer, he must be a man because man hath sinned and therefore a man must die for sin to appease God's wrath. He must be God to sustain and uphold the manhood to overcome and vanquish death. Question. What be the offices of Christ to make him an all-sufficient saviour? Answer. He is a priest, a prophet, a king. Question. Why is he a priest? Answer. To work the means of salvation in the behalf of mankind. Question. How doth he work the means of salvation? Answer first by making satisfaction to his father for the sin of man secondly by making intercession question how doth he make satisfaction answer by two means and the first is by offering a sacrifice question what is this sacrifice answer christ himself as he is man consisting of body and soul question what is the altar answer christ as he is god is the altar on which he sacrificed himself Question. Who is the priest? Answer. None but Christ, and that as he is both God and man. Question. How oft did he sacrifice himself? Answer. Never but once. Question. What death did he suffer when he sacrificed himself? Answer. A death upon the cross, peculiar to him alone, for besides the separation of body and soul, he felt also the pangs of hell, in that the whole wrath of God due to the sin of man was poured forth upon him. Question. What profit cometh by this sacrifice? Answer. God's wrath is appeased for sin. Question. Could the suffering of Christ, which was but for a short time, appease God's wrath? Answer. Yea, for seeing Christ suffered, God suffered, and that is more than if all men in the world had suffered for ever. Question. Now tell me the other means of satisfaction. Answer. It is the perfect fulfilling of the law. Question. How did he fulfil the law? Answer, by his perfect righteousness, which consisteth of two parts, the first, the integrity and pureness of his human nature, the other, his obedience in performing all that the law required. Question, you have showed how Christ doth make satisfaction, tell me likewise how he doth make intercession. Answer, he alone doth continually appear before his Father in heaven making the faithful and all their prayers acceptable unto him through the merits of his own perfect satisfaction question why is christ a prophet answer to reveal unto his church the way and means of salvation and this he doth outwardly by the ministry of his word and inwardly by the teaching of his holy spirit question why is he also a king answer that he might bountifully bestow upon us and convey unto us all the foresaid means of salvation. Question. How doth he show himself to be a king? Answer. In that, being dead and buried, he rose from the grave, quickened his dead body, ascended into heaven, and now sitteth at the right hand of his Father, with full power and glory in heaven. Question. How else? Answer, in that he doth continually inspire and direct his servants by the divine power of his Holy Spirit, according to his holy word. Question, but to whom will this blessed king communicate all means of salvation? Answer, he offereth them to all mankind, and they are sufficient to save all mankind, but all shall not be saved thereby, because by faith they will not receive them. 4. Question, what is faith? Answer, faith is a wonderful grace of God by which a man doth apprehend and apply Christ and all his benefits unto himself. Question, how doth a man apply Christ unto himself, seeing we are on earth and Christ in heaven? Answer, this applying is done by assurance, when a man is verily persuaded by the Holy Spirit of God's favour towards himself, particularly, and of the forgiveness of his own sins. Question. How doth God bring men truly to believe in Christ? 
answer first he prepareth their hearts that they might be capable of faith and then he worketh faith in them question how doth god prepare men's hearts answer by bruising them as if one would break an hard stone to powder this is done by humbling them question how doth god humble a man answer by working in him a sight of his sins and a sorrow for them question how is the sight of sin wrought answer by the moral law the sum whereof is the ten commandments question what sins may i find in myself by them answer ten question what is the first answer to make something thy god which is not god by fearing it loving it so trusting in it more than in the true god question what is the second answer to worship false gods or the true god in a false manner question what is the third answer to dishonor god in abusing his titles words and works question what is the fourth answer to break the sabbath in doing the works of their calling and of the flesh and in leaving undone the works of the spirit question what be the six latter answer to do anything that may hinder thy neighbour's dignity life chastity wealth good name though it be but in the secret thoughts and motions of thy heart unto which thou givest no liking nor consent question what is sorrow for sin answer it is when a man's conscience is touched with a lively feeling of god's displeasure for any of these sins in such wise that he is wholly out of heart with himself acknowledging that he hath deserved shame and confusion eternally question how doth god work this sorrow answer by the terrible curse of the law question what is that answer he which breaks but one of the commandments of god though it be but once in all his lifetime and that only in one thought is in danger of eternal damnation thereby question when men's hearts are thus prepared how doth god engraft faith in them answer by working certain inward motions in the heart which are the seeds of faith out of which it breedeth question what is the first of them answer when a man humbled under the burden of his sins doth acknowledge and feel that he stands in great need of christ question what is the second answer an hungering desire and a longing to be made partakers of christ and all his merits question what is the third answer a flying to the throne of grace from the sentence of the law pricking the conscience question how is this done answer by praying with sending up loud cries for god's favour in christ in the pardoning of sin and with fervent perseverance herein till the desire of the heart be granted question what followeth after all this answer god then according to his merciful promise lets the poor sinner feel the assurance of his love wherewith he loveth him in christ which assurance is a lively faith question are there diverse degrees and measures of true faith answer yea question what is the least measure of true faith that any man can have answer when a man of an humble spirit by reason of the littleness of his faith doth not yet feel the assurance of the forgiveness of his sins and yet he is persuaded that they are pardonable and therefore desireth that they should be pardoned and with his heart prayeth to god to pardon them question how do you know that such a man hath faith answer these desires and prayers are testimony of the spirit whose property it is to stir up a longing and a lusting after heavenly things with sighs and groans for god's favour and mercy in christ now where the spirit of christ is there is christ dwelling and where christ dwelleth there is true faith how weak soever it be question what is the greatest measure of faith answer when a man is fully persuaded of god's love in christ towards him particularly and of the forgiveness of his own sins question when shall a christian heart come to this full assurance answer not at the first but in some continuance of time when he hath been well practised in repentance and hath had diverse experiences of god's love unto him in christ then after them will appear in his heart the fullness of persuasion which is the ripeness and strength of faith question what benefits doth a man receive by his faith in christ 
Answer, hereby he is justified before God and sanctified. Question, what is this to be justified before God? Answer, it comprehendeth two things, the first to be cleared from the guiltiness and punishment of sin, the second to be accepted as perfectly righteous before God. Question, how is a man cleared from the guiltiness and punishment of his sin? Answer, by Christ's sufferings and death upon the cross. Question, how is he accepted righteous before God? Answer, by the righteousness of Christ imputed to him. Question, what profit comes by being thus justified? Answer, hereby and by no other means in the world the believer shall be accepted before God's judgment seat as worthy of eternal life by the merits of the same righteousness of Christ. Question, do not good works then make us worthy of eternal life? Answer, no, for God, who is perfect righteousness itself, will find in the best works we do more matter of damnation than of salvation, and therefore we must rather condemn ourselves for our good works than look to be justified before God thereby. Question, how may a man know that he is justified before God? Answer, he need not ascend into heaven to search the secret counsel of God, but rather descend into his own heart to search whether he be sanctified or not. Question, what is it to be sanctified? Answer, it comprehendeth two things, the first, to be purged from the corruption of his own nature, the second, to be endued with inward righteousness. Question, how is the corruption of sin purged? Answer, by the merits and power of Christ's death, which, being by faith applied, is as a corrosive to abate, consume, and weaken the power of all sin. Question, how is a man endued with inherent righteousness? Answer, through the virtue of Christ's resurrection, which, being applied by faith, is as a restorative to revive a man that is dead in sin to newness of life. Question, in what part of man is sanctification wrought? Answer, in every part of body and soul. Question, in what time is it wrought? Answer, it is begun in this life, in which the faithful receive only the first fruits of the Spirit, and it is not finished before the end of this life. Question, what graces of the Spirit do usually show themselves in the heart of a man sanctified? Answer, the hatred of sin and the love of righteousness. Question, what proceeds of them? Answer, repentance, which is a settled purpose in the heart, with a careful endeavour to leave all his sins and to live a Christian life. Question, what goeth with repentance? Answer, a continual fighting and struggling against the assaults of a man's own flesh, against the motions of the devil, and the enticements of the world. Question, what followeth after a man hath gotten the victory in any temptation or affliction? Answer, experience of God's love in Christ, and so increase of peace of conscience and joy in the Holy Ghost. Question, what follows if in any temptation he be overcome, and through infirmity fall? Answer, after a while there will arise a godly sorrow, which is, when a man is grieved for no other cause in the world, but for this only, that by his sin he hath displeased God, who hath been unto him a most merciful and loving Father. Question, what sign is there of this sorrow? Answer, the true sign of it is this, when a man can be grieved for the very disobedience to God in his evil word or deed, though he should never be punished, and though there were neither heaven nor hell. Question, what follows after this sorrow? Answer, repentance renewed afresh. Question, by what signs will this repentance appear? Answer, I, seven, one, a care to leave the sin into which he has fallen, two, an utter condemning of himself for it, and a craving of pardon, three, a great anger against himself for his carelessness, four, a fear, lest he should fall into the same sin again, five, desire ever after to please God, six, zeal of the same, seven, revenge upon himself for his former offence. 5. Question, what outward means must we use to obtain faith and all blessings of God which come by faith? Answer, the preaching of God's word and the administration of the sacraments and prayer. Question, where is the word of God to be found? Answer, the whole word of God needful to salvation is set down in the holy scriptures. Question, 
How know you that the scriptures are the word of God, and not men's policies? Answer, I am assured of it. First, because the Holy Ghost persuadeth my conscience that it is so. Secondly, I see it by experience, for the preaching of the scriptures have the power of God in them to humble a man when they are preached, and to cast him down to hell, and afterward to restore and raise him up again. Question, what is the use of the word of God preached? Answer, first it breedeth, and then it increaseth faith in them which are chosen to salvation, but unto them that perish it is by reason of their corruption an occasion of their further damnation. Question, how must we hear God's word, that it may be effectual to our salvation? Answer, we must come unto it with hunger-bitten hearts, having an appetite to the word. We must mark it with attention, receive it by faith, submit ourselves unto it with fear and trembling, even then when our faults are reproved. Lastly, we must hide it in the corners of our hearts, that we may frame our lives and conversations by it. Question, what is a sacrament? Answer, a sign to represent a seal to confirm, an instrument to convey Christ and all his benefits to them that do believe in him. Question. Why must a sacrament represent the mercies of God before our eyes? Answer. Because we are dull to conceive and to remember them. Question. Why doth the sacrament seal unto us the mercies of God? Answer. Because we are full of unbelief and doubting of them. Question. Why is the sacrament the instrument of the Spirit to convey the mercies of God into our hearts? Answer. Because we are like Thomas, we will not believe till we feel them in some measure in our hearts. Question. How many sacraments are there? Answer. Two and no more. Baptism, by which we have our admission into the true church of God, and the Lord's Supper, by which we are nourished and preserved in the church after our admission. Question. What is done in baptism? Answer. Solemnly, in the assembly of the church, a covenant is made between the Lord and the party baptized. Question. In the making of this covenant, what doth God promise to the party baptized? Answer. Christ, with all his blessings that come by him. Question. To what condition is the party baptized bound? Answer. To receive Christ and to repent of his sin. Question. What meaneth the sprinkling or dipping in water? Answer. The covenant, being solemnly made, is thereby sealed and confirmed. Question. How cometh it to pass that many, after their baptism, for a long time, feel not the effect and fruit of it, and some never? Answer. The fault is not in God who keeps his covenants, but the fault is in themselves, in that they do not keep the condition of the covenant to receive Christ by faith and to repent of all their sins. Question. When shall a man then see the effect of his baptism? Answer. At what time soever he doth receive Christ by faith, though it be an hundred years after, he shall then feel the power of God to regenerate him and to work all things in him which he offered in baptism. Question. How if a man never keep the condition to which he bound himself in baptism? Answer. His damnation shall be the greater because he breaketh his vow made to God. Question. What is done in the Lord's Supper? Answer. The former covenant made in baptism is renewed in the Lord's Supper between the Lord himself and the receiver. Question. What is the receiver? Answer. Every one that hath been baptized and after his baptism hath truly believed in Christ and repented of his sin from his heart. Question. What meaneth the bread and wine, the eating of the bread and the drinking of the wine? Answer. These outward actions are a second seal set by the Lord's own hand unto his covenant, and they do give every receiver to understand that as God doth bless the bread and wine to preserve and strengthen the body of the receiver, so Christ received by faith shall nourish him and preserve both body and soul unto eternal life. Question. What shall a true receiver feel in himself after the receiving of the sacrament? Answer, the increase of his faith in Christ, the increase of sanctification, a greater measure of dying to sin, a greater care to live in newness of life. Question, what if a man, after the receiving of the sacrament, never find any such thing in himself? Answer, he may well suspect himself whether he did ever repent or not. Question, what is another means of increasing faith? Answer, prayer. Question, what is prayer? 
answer a familiar speech with god in which either we crave things needful or give thanks for things received question in asking things needful what is required answer two things an earnest desire and faith question what things must a christian man's heart desire answer six things especially question what are they answer one that he may glorify god two that god may reign in his heart and not sin three that he may do god's will and not the lusts of his flesh four that he may rely himself on god's providence for all the means of this temporal life five that he may be justified and be at peace with god six that by the power of god he may be strengthened against all temptations question what is faith answer a persuasion that these things which we truly desire god will grant them for christ's sake six question after that a man hath led a short life in this world what followeth then answer death which is the parting asunder of body and soul question why do wicked men and unbelievers die answer that their bodies may go to the earth and their souls be cast into hell fire question why do the godly die answer that their bodies may rest for a while in the earth and their souls may enter into heaven immediately question what followeth after death answer the day of judgment question what sign is there to know this day from other days answer heaven and earth shall be consumed with fire immediately before the coming of the judge question who shall be the judge answer jesus christ the son of god Question, what shall be the coming to judgment? Answer, he shall come in the clouds in great majesty and glory, with infinite company of angels. Question, how shall all men be cited to judgment? Answer, at the sound of a trumpet, the living shall be changed in the twinkling of an eye, and the dead shall rise again, every one of them with his own body, and all shall be gathered together before Christ, and after this the good shall be severed from the bad, these standing on the left hand of Christ, the other on the right. Question. How will Christ try and examine every man's cause? Answer. The books of all men's doings shall be laid open, and every man shall be tried by the works which he did in his lifetime, because they are open and manifest signs of faith or unbelief. Question. What sentence will he give? Answer. He will give sentence of salvation to the elect and godly, but he will pronounce sentence of damnation against unbelievers and reprobates. Question. What state shall the godly be in after the day of judgment? Answer, they shall continue forever in the highest heaven in the presence of God, having full fellowship with Christ Jesus and reigning with him forever. Question, what state shall the wicked be in after the day of judgment? Answer, in eternal perdition and destruction in hellfire. Question, what is that? Answer, it stands in three things especially. One, a perpetual separation from God's comfortable presence. 2. Fellowship with the devil and his angels. 3. An horrible pang and torment both of body and soul, arising of the feeling of the whole wrath of God, poured forth on the wicked for ever, world without end. Finis. The Foundation of Christian Religion Gathered into Six Principles by William Perkins this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org.